So I was expecting to post the completion of my big brake upgrade on the Tacoma this week. Unfortunately, I'm not yet done. Um, this project has turned into a massive multi-week undertaking. Uh, first to get the rotors machined and then to get everything mounted. So on the previous video, you guys saw that I started out with the CTSV brake caliper. Um, that used the same size bolts as the stock Tacoma brake caliper, which is an M12. Unfortunately, the holes on the knuckle and the holes on the Cadillac CTSV caliper were not the same distance apart. The CTSV caliper had holes that were slightly closer, so I had to bore the holes in the knuckle even larger than M12 in order to accommodate the caliper. And then upon getting the caliper installed, I realized the caliper sat way too far out. The reason for that is the caliper is intended for a larger diameter rotor uh, for the CTSV than the ATS. The ATS works perfectly with an EVO rotor. So what I ended up doing was that I ordered Cadillac ATS brake calipers, waited for those to come in. Those use an M14 by two bolt, by two millimeter and 35 millimeters long. Um, so I had to go ahead and order new bolts, new washers. I had to order new drill bits so I can drill my knuckle out further. I've now drilled the knuckle out to, I wanna say five eighths. Um, is what you need to drill it out to and so that hilariously right that that's larger than the 14 millimeters as well because the bolt spacing on the ATS caliper and the CTSV caliper actually does seem to be the same so again the bolt holes are too close together so I had to drill my spindle excuse me so I had to drill my knuckle larger in diameter than the bolts that I need in order to accommodate it um, I don't remember having had to do that on my friend's ATS uh, Brembo swap onto his truck, but I do vaguely remember having to oval the holes. And so now that I'm thinking about it, that, that's the same exact situation. The difference is he just bought one random drill bit and didn't really buy a whole bunch of steps like I did. So we were just trying to basically hog the knuckle holes out um, to the full size and it, it was a big disaster. So that's probably why I don't remember any detail. Um, but anyway, that's what I ended up doing. I now have the calipers on. Unfortunately, the brake lines for the STI, I've got them installed, but I don't think they're gonna work. Um, the reason for that is I think they're too long. So when you turn the steering wheel in a certain direction, it's very easy for you to kink those lines. At least I'm afraid that that's what's gonna happen. So because I don't trust that, I've gone ahead and ordered uh, stainless brake lines that are Tacoma specific. That's what we used on my friends and it worked well. And I mean, I wanted to go with, you know, it was originally listed on the forums years ago when I bought all these components. So way back when I bought the STI ones, I didn't know that Tacoma lines would work or that they're even made the stainless stop tack Tacoma lines. Um, so I've ordered those, I'm waiting on those to arrive and whenever they do get here, I'm going to go ahead and install those. I'll show you what I mean about the brake lines right now. So if you observe the brake line, there's kind of this little excess that goes here and it goes down in this loop, right? So what will happen is when I turn the other direction, that loop will kind of come together and the end of it, I think, is kinking. So I would not trust a brake line that's doing that. I feel like long term, that brake line is going to undergo failure. And the last thing you want is for your brake line to go while you're driving and you end up in an accident. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that out to the Tacoma line, which is shorter in order to avoid that problem. So another problem I ran into with this brake swap was when I was actually trying to install the lines. So the brake lines on the Tacoma attached to these hard lines. And when I did the Willwoods way back when, I guess I tightened the adapter onto the hard line way too tight. So if you look at the line where the brake line is supposed to attach, it'll be difficult to get on camera, but this goes over this flare, and I guess I tightened it so much that this section flared out, and as a result, no longer fit inside the other brand new brake line, even though it did fit in the adapter, which is funny, which is the same thread and everything, but I guess the entrance of the StopTech line is a little bit smaller than that adapter that I used, so I couldn't get this to go in. Um, so what I did is I bought another hard line. I bought a set of these two bending pliers and I bent up a brand new line in order to replace that. So if you look where this shiny fitting is in this tube that goes there, that's the new tube that I bent up with the two bending pliers. It came out perfectly. I'm very happy with that. 
However, getting the tube and then having to run to another auto parts which had the pliers in stock because the first store I went to didn't. Um, <laughs> delayed me a couple days because I got one part one day and then the other the next and then I bent it up. Um, so yeah, that's just another delay. But luckily that portion is done. So this right here is actually the final source of delay that I've run into. Um, on my way back from the machinist who did the rotors for me, I unfortunately fell in a pothole during the rain. I couldn't see it. It was kind of dark and the pothole was pretty evenly filled with water because it was basically a mini sinkhole. There was no asphalt missing there. It's just like a, a deep dip in the road. And when my driver's side front wheel fell in there, what happened is the load on the shock caused the rod to shoot that way and break out of the little hole that kind of centers it. Now that had happened to me in the past with these QA1s, that's because really the spring was not supposed to mount to the shock on this vehicle, right? It was mounted to the lower control arm and then that upper cup, the shock goes through the center, mounts to the lower control arm and then that upper cup. Now the bottom of the spring rides on the shock body because it's a coilover, so the forces um, in toward the engine bay are a little harder when the suspension compresses and especially with a big bump like that um, it basically wears the rod out by basically sawing away at that metal cup um, that happened to me way back when in the past and I had to actually buy new coilovers because the rods were shot um, and what I did in order to fix the gash that was caused by the rod I, is I had to buy washers and weld them in place I knew that that would be probably not the best fix and the ideal fix was to weld the pipe in place so that it would hold the bushing that centers the rod and therefore keep it from ever shifting. Um, never got around to doing that, fell in that pothole, um, broke the washer because the back half of the washer wasn't welded so it, that part just kind of snapped off. Um, it's funny that I never thought to weld it through the engine bay, weld the back side of it. All you had to do is remove the sort of rubber shield that's there, which I've done. And now I've actually welded a section of pipe and that's gonna restrain the bushing such that that can never shift and break again the way that it did in the past. So basically, the shock rod comes up through here and it has a bushing, right? That kind of, you normally the nut presses down and the bushing sits in a cup and kind of keeps it from shifting. But that cup is very, very short. Now with this big pipe here, it's about 21 millimeters tall, there's nowhere for the bushing to shift. So as a result of that, the rod can't go sawing through the top of that cup and I won't have that issue anymore. Um, so I'm kind of happy that I was able to resolve that. I have to go and weld that on the other side too. And unfortunately, yet another delay, my uh, welding mask has gone bad. So I wasn't able to finish welding the back side of that. Um, so I'm not done there. I've got to go get another welding mask tomorrow and then finish up that weld and then go do the pipe on the other side because I don't want the other side to break either. That one hasn't broken this time around, but it did do so in the past. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and treat all this rust that you see on this side. If you look at my frame and my control arm nut here, all this area is rusted and the reason for that is about a year ago, I had my battery pop. Um, it swelled up on one side and then leaked all this acid. And that acid came down and rusted my frame. Now, these Tacomas were known for having a rusty frame. Mine does not have that issue. Maybe because it's a Florida truck, it's never been exposed to salt. So there's no rust anywhere on my frame except for here where it got bathed in battery acid. That's also what killed my previous alternator that I replaced in one of the videos I did um, last year maybe even before actually it might have been a 2019 video but either way um, I neutralized the acid with baking soda and warm water however I've not gone back to fix the damage so now that I have the truck up on jack stands I'm gonna go ahead um, and just take a wire brush on a drill and remove all that rust and then I'm going to you know coat all of that in order to protect it and keep it from rusting out again I just need to finish the welding portion and then I'll do that and then I'll go ahead and just paint everything on at once the new welded pipe and the rusty sections once I'm done with that and I have the brake lines and everything buttoned back up then I can probably take this truck out of here 
go for a spin, check out my new brakes and enjoy it. I've also got some work I'm doing on the carbon fiber hood. So years ago in all craziness, I cut a vent into a brand new carbon fiber hood. Um, I was gonna mold a Mustang GT500, a previous gen GT500, not the latest and greatest one. I was gonna mold the vent from that onto this hood. I actually bought the vent, I placed it, it looks great. However, it does not follow the contour of the hood. And because it doesn't, I would have had to do a lot of work to get it to sit flush. A lot of people just kind of glue those onto their hood. I didn't want that look. I didn't want the hood vent to sit above. I wanted it to sit flush. Um, so that was going to be a lot of work and I never got around to finishing it. I glued all these little plastic pieces here to support that. I've gone ahead and ripped those out. Now I'm going to cut these edges a little bit wider and I'm going to go ahead and glue in a mesh kind of like I did with my Miata's hood. It's going to just look a lot better. And that'll also protect the components in my engine bay from the sun for the most part, which I'm pretty sure that's why my last battery popped because the sun was hitting it through that vent. And so it just kind of like damaged the plastic and over time the battery swelled up and popped right through that damaged plastic. While I'm doing that, I'm also going to go ahead and make some brackets for my hood pins. So if you look at that pin, it's just hanging there. There's literally nothing down here for it to hold on to. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and make a little bracket in this space that will hold that pin. Another thing that I've got to do is clean up some rust in this area and redo the vent in my grill, which is starting to crack from years of being exposed to the sun. I'm impressed that it lasted that long. It is a 3D printed ABS piece. I think uh, next time around I'm going to print it maybe in like carbon fiber reinforced nylon and I'm going to paint over it so that I don't have the issue of it, you know, going bad in the sun. You can actually see this is a very functional vent it goes straight out into my grill and then straight into my air box. If you actually walk by here and I rev the motor, say you like put your shirt near it, it'll suck your shirt in. It's actually pretty strong. It's about as good of a ram air effect as you'll ever get. So that's kind of where I'm at with the truck project right now. Um, I'm not as far along as I wish I were. All the same, I'm pretty happy with the progress that I've made. I finally got the brakes on. As soon as I get the lines, I can put the lines on and bleed the brakes. That should be a pretty easy process. I don't expect too much difficulty there. And I'll finish up the welding, I'll finish up the painting, the rust removal fixing up the hood and my truck will basically drive out of this garage as a brand new truck. I've also actually purchased the AC dryer and all new seals. So I'm gonna go ahead and take apart my entire AC system, like all the lines, change every single seal, and then recharge my AC and hopefully have a functional AC again. Based on the symptoms that I was having, a couple of the AC techs on the forum informed me that it's most likely that I have a bad O-ring somewhere and so it's just never getting up to pressure when I'm charging it with refrigerant. So hopefully they're correct. And upon fixing that, I'll have AC in my truck again. The AC in this truck was amazing. It was ice cold, blizzard level AC. So I'm dying to have that back. Florida is a really, really hot place right now. I'm dying in this garage. I have the fan off because it makes too much noise. Um, and I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys while I'm doing this, but yeah, it's really hot and I'm very excited about getting AC back in this thing. I'm also gonna have the steering wheel with the uh, steering wheel controls, the Lexus IS300 steering wheel. I actually use the same shape airbag as the super wheel. So I'm gonna transfer the Toyota logo, you know, airbag onto the IS300 rim. I've got the Alcantara wrap for that. It's gonna be cool, it's gonna really match what I've done with my interior as far as my door panels and my back seats and all that, and my, you know, my RSX seats, which are also wrapped in a black microfiber or synthetic suede type material. So that is the update on the truck. I'm really excited to get that done and get some more videos out for you guys to see. If you've enjoyed the series so far, Please feel free to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you're notified when I have a new video up. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and if you have any feedback, please feel free to leave that in the comments.